<laughs> How's it going, everybody? It's me, Waddles. Pointed Dripstone. Not only is it pointed, but it is also technically Dripstone as well. It's also one of the most unique things in the entire game. Because of the unique properties that this strange block has, it's insanely useful for machines. Good news, machines are exactly what I've got for you today. Here are five Dripstone machines that will elevate your world. Are you looking for lava, but uh, not just any lava? You're looking for easy lava, relatively quickly and completely automatically? Well, if yes, the answer is this farm right here. On the hotbar are all of the materials that you're going to need for this build. I love this thing. It's so simple. It's so small. We're going to start with a cauldron a anywhere. It could be on the surface. It could be under the ground. doesn't matter at all. Then we're going to do temporary block. Then we're going to do dripstone block. This block is really, really important. Make sure it's dripstone. Then remove the temporary block and place pointed dripstone. On top of that temporary block, then permanent, 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 and finally permanent. Make sure these blocks aren't burnable because right in the middle, we're going to take that out and put lava. And would you look at that? Just like that, you're a farm professional. You're super simple. Automatic lava creator, you've done it. So pointed dripstone has this absolutely chef's kiss of a mechanic where you take the thing and put it right below a block of solid dripstone and then put any kind of liquid above it. So water or lava and then a cauldron below all of that and the cauldron will actually slowly fill up. Now, slowly fill up. Slowly fill up. Of course, the rates are going to vary. But if you're playing the game on a normal tick speed, on average, this thing should take about 19 minutes to fill up. So one in-game day. Look, I'll be the first to say that that's not exactly great rates, but what you could do to make it better rates is easily expand this thing. I mean, it's so cheap after all. Basically, just replicate what you just did, tile this beauty over a couple times, and eventually, you'll have more buckets of lava than you could ever need. So really quick, before we move on to this next one, if you like these short, simple farm videos from me, then here I am. I am once again asking for your support. <laughs> <laughs> Could you leave a like on this video? It, it would really help. Get ready to get muddy because this next one is all about Minecraft 1.19's secret upgrade. So the materials for this next machine, you're going to need a little bit more than you did with the last one, but it's all still pretty affordable. This block right here is going to be a dispenser. That's an observer. All of this in exact amounts, including, well, uh, hey, yeah, not really including the mud. Uh, we're going to turn mud into clay with this machine. Are you trying to turn mud into clay, but just don't have the time to stand around and watch this stuff uh, literally dry out? Well, then check this out, because this next farm is exactly what you need in your life. So we're going to start with a random temporary block, then we're going to place a block of dripstone. Then we're going to go ahead and remove this block and actually dig down this time. Right below that block of dripstone, we're going to need pointed dripstone. Then we can go ahead and climb back out of that hole and fill it back in. This is the start to the farm. After this, we're going to have the spot where we put our mud block to dry it out. Now, I'd like to set up some kind of detector on this farm, so basically, I can walk away from the farm and know when this thing has turned into clay. The detector is so easy to set up. So we start with an observer looking down at the mud, then above it, we have this dispenser right there. Inside of the dispenser, we're going to place a water bucket. Now, over here, we're going to place a hay bale right next to that observer, and then a campfire right there. Then around the campfire, we're going to put trap doors. But, in my opinion, totally optional, uh, start like this. Place a temporary block, then do trap door, trap door, trap door, and then find out that I told you you need an extra trap door. <laughs> Despicable. I'm sorry, truly sorry for wasting your time. <laughs> Anyways, we have trap doors, you can do solid blocks or whatever. Go ahead and close the trap doors, remove that, and place the campfire right there. With the hay bale right below the campfire, the smoke is going to go pretty high up in the air. That means you could walk away from this thing and be like relatively far away, maybe like down there or something, and you'll be able to see when the smoke goes out. Now, the smoke is going to automatically go out as soon as this observer notices the mud block change. So, watch this. One hour later. And there we go. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time, but clearly, as you can see, the mud turned into clay and the campfire smoke is gone. So, meaning if I was like all the way over here, I could look up into the sky and see clearly that the smoke is going away, which means the clay is done being made. So next up, check this out. In survival, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and break this block and place a new block right there. Now, unfortunately, the water has dispensed again. To fix that, you could either grab the water bucket and pick it back up, or you could add a button onto this design, press the button, and the water is picked back up. After you place your mud right there, before you walk away, make sure you use a flint and seal to relight the campfire. Go ahead and close that trap door, and then you can go do, uh, you know, whatever else you were trying to do. On its own, admittedly, it's a little bit lonely, but of course, you could tile this thing over. Or maybe even a little bit more material friendly, you could make like a couple indicator models and then a couple other models that have no indicator at all. So meaning it's really just pointed dripstone and dripstone and then mud on top of it. When one of your indicator farms turns off, it's time to go back and check. 
But how about just like the plain old pointed dripstone item? I mean, decorationally, it's pretty interesting looking. Of course, you can put it on the ground to make a faster mob remover. That's pretty cool. Or you could take the pointed dripstone and use it in like literally any of the farms that I'm showing you today. Yeah, the stuff is pretty useful. This stuff is even used in a crafting recipe. The dripstone block. If you're looking for more pointed dripstone in your world, then this next farm is the farm for you. So look, I know I messed up a little bit on the materials in the last one, but I promise this one, it's spot on. It's perfect. These are the exact materials you need, including about 20 building blocks. These building blocks can be basically anything. As you can probably tell, common theme today is farms that are really compact, like farms that are so compact that you could put like basically anywhere. Same thing for this one. This thing is really, really compact. Sink it down into the ground, put it right on top of the ground, doesn't really matter. No matter what, you're starting with a chest and a hopper linked to it. After that, it's time for the redstone machine right off the bat. We're going to place an observer facing forward, then a building block, then on top of the building block, redstone dust, and then finally, in front of all that, a piston looking forward. Now, it's time for more building blocks. We need to block this thing in. We're going to place three building blocks like that, but keep in mind that you have a chest right here, so maybe consider cutting one of these blocks into like a staircase or something. Maybe use glass, or just skip it. If you skip it, it should be fine. Probably. Let's go ahead and continue working on the machine, though. We're going to place another building block there, another building block there. Then we're going to go ahead and grab another building block and put it there, another one there, and another one there. Now, uh, next up, it's time for the pointed dripstone machine. So we're going to start with the dripstone block. Very important. That needs to be dripstone. And then right below that, pointed dripstone. In front of all this, make sure you put at least two building blocks. Probably three is a little bit safer, but at least two. Then up on top of this thing, temporary block, and then building block, building block, building block, and building block. Finally, remove this, place water right there, and then give it time. With a water source right above the pointed dripstone, it will grow. But it'll grow slow. This growth sub can take a long time, but whenever it does grow, you'll get two pointed dripstone every single time. This is compact and cheap, uh, but not to be that guy, keep watching this video. You will not believe what farm I have at the end. <laughs> I can't even say it. You won't believe the farm I, ha I have for you at the end. <laughs> Do you want to see a cool magic trick? And coincidentally, are maybe all of the machines we're taking a look at today just, just, they're hurting your mind. They're, they're confusing. Well, uh, check this out. Next build, all of the materials are in the hot farm. You scale the materials up however big you want to make it. So uh, let's say this is my house right here. Clearly, as you can see, I have like walls in my house. And then also, master builder here, I go ahead and use the same block on a wall that I use on the floor right there. It's beautiful. What we're going to need to do is drop down below the floor here and place pointed dripstone just on the floor. This one is pretty sweet. If you have pointed dripstone hanging below any block, doesn't have to be dripstone, could literally just be a floor block. Well, if you place mud on top of that block and give it enough time, the mud will actually still drain out to clay. You could turn some plain old boring floor inside of your base into a secret machine. Maybe mark it somehow so you know where you should be putting the mud or just remember where the mud goes. If you set this up in a high traffic area in your base, maybe like the middle of your storage room, of course, out of the way or something, then you're going to see when the mud turns into clay. And then when it turns into clay, grab even more mud and just place it down on the floor. It's so cool and really simple, too. Well, here you are. Me, you. We're best friends now. You made it to the end of the video. The thing that you won't be able to believe. So check this out. I find that the dripstone grows slow, sometimes painfully slow. What I've done is designed a bigger pointed dripstone farm for you. This pointed dripstone farm, being quite bigger than the other one we looked at, is going to get you way more pointed dripstone. Another nice thing about this one, I think it looks pretty good. Like you set this up in your world, maybe build it something like that, change it out for whatever your style is, and yeah, you know, it's like a cool looking machine that just runs continuously. So let's take a look at the materials. We have quite a bit more materials for this farm than we do for any of the other ones in this video. On the top, in exact amounts, are all of the materials that you're going to need. In the middle, like on the bottom, are building blocks. You're going to want to have maybe about two stacks of building blocks on hand, and you're going to need water sources for this farm to work. Compare this machine to the other machines we've taken a look at in this video. This one is clearly bigger. The footprint of this thing is going to be about 15 blocks long and five or so blocks wide. We're going to find an open spot on the ground where this thing will fit and start with rails. We'll set up the rail line first. On the ground, we're going to start laying rails. Then we're going to place a hopper in the ground as well and a chest that that hopper goes into. Now, uh, what we're going to want to do is create one side of this farm that is 11 blocks long. So right here, that should be 11 if I counted right. Then we're going to do powered rail. We're going to actually dig down right here, dig down right there, place some kind of power source, then put the block back and put another powered rail. Then one more powered rail and we're on the back side of the farm. 
go ahead and take the rest of your 11 rails and basically just fill things in that's going to link you over to this side where basically you copy the other side place a power source in the ground place a ground block on the ground and then a couple more powered rails there we go that's the rail line aesthetics for this farm are your call entirely the building blocks that you're using here for the most part don't matter at all what we're going to go ahead and do is fill this layer in all the way with building blocks then what we're going to do is go ahead and place a building block there a building block there 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 and there and then we're going to flip over to the other side and basically just continue those building blocks all the way through the back of this farm now it's time for the redstone machine we're going to place observers facing out where the building blocks aren't that's going to mean four observers on every single side looking out just like this with all the observers in on this farm, we have something that looks like this right here. Next up, go ahead and fill these blocks in as well. But remember what blocks you just placed because right on top of those, you need redstone dust. Now the redstone dust is going to go right there and then we're going to need it to go into blocks on the side. So we're going to place more solid blocks right there. Now it's time for the pistons. The pistons need to be placed on every single block in this row facing out. The redstone dust right on top of the block next to the observer is going to be able to power the piston and the pistons next to it with the solid building blocks right there. It's very important that you leave the redstone dust in that cross shape and not like that. If it's in the dot, it's not going to work out very well. So check this out. Eventually, once something grows, three pistons push out. Same thing there, same thing there, same thing there, and same thing on the other side. I've got good news for you. If you're not into redstone like it just confuses you, that was the hardest part of the build. Next up, we need building blocks. Go ahead and fill this next row in all the way. At this point, you could cover in the top of the farm too, or you could not. It doesn't really matter. Now we've got this solid box with the creepy observer faces and pistons and rails all around it. To basically finish this thing off almost entirely, it's time for the dripstone. We're going to place dripstone blocks all the way along this farm, hanging off at the side of this thing, on both sides. And then right below every single dripstone block, we're going to place a piece of pointed dripstone. Now, if you're setting up this farm and you don't have 18 pointed dripstone quite yet, that's fine. If you're running low on dripstone, the only important thing here is that you place pointed dripstone directly above where the observer is. If you place pointed dripstone not above the observer and let it grow, then it's never going to be harvested. So now you're basically done. Next up, we need a minecart in here with a hopper inside of it. Go ahead and put it on the rail and push it, and it'll start running around forever. Then we're going to need a little bit of water up top and whoa. To stop the minecart from getting stopped, and also to keep the items that are spit out of this thing inside of this thing, place walls all the way up around this thing. Walls could really be anything you want, as long as it's not like redstone blocks or something. Redstone blocks might mess with the hopper a little bit. I think I'm going to go with glass. Glass looks pretty cool. I like being able to see into these things. With walls built all the way up around the side of this thing, we have a machine that looks kind of something like this. Of course, we don't want water to spill down into the lower part of the machine, mess up the minecart and everything. So what we're going to do is place a couple more building blocks up on the top of this thing. Finally, after you have all of your building blocks in so water doesn't spill down, place water sources on top of all of the dripstone blocks. And now it's time to wait. Minecraft's default random take speed is 3. As long as you don't change it, that's what you're playing on. And for the sake of showing you that this farm actually works, we're going to go ahead and speed it up to 300. As soon as we have pointed driftstone, grow in front of an observer, just like that right there, one section will be harvested. The hopper minecart will come by and pick everything up and throw it inside of the chest for you. Conveniently, rails on the ground will stop any pointed driftstone that isn't in front of an observer from growing too far and stopping the minecart. Set this thing up in your world, hang out nearby this thing so it's loaded in, and sooner rather than later, hopefully you'll have more pointed driftstone than you ever need. Five super simple dripstone machines. That's it. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I appreciate you. If you enjoy videos like this one and you'd like to see me make more, then leave a like. And if you aren't subscribed, today is the day. You subscribe, you get good luck forever. forever. Gotta send a big thank you to my beautiful patrons who helped me make content like this. Paul P, Fire Dragon 19, Empress MC, Kira and Maeve, and the Great Vegeta. Thank you all. It's me, Waddle. I'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.